Hey everyone, let's go shrimping down to Bayo. Welcome to SETI Astro. It was nice to let my newt stretch its legs on a dim, narrowband object. Very fitting, the, the shrimp nebula, considering I'm down in southern Louisiana with all the shrimping boats around. I was planning on getting uh, some more data, but one of the nights there was some clouds, so unfortunately I had to get rid of some of my subframes, but I did manage 57 15-minute exposures here in hydrogen, 30 15-minute exposures in oxygen, and for sulfur out of the 36, only 22 were usable, all 15-minute exposures as well. I do want to say in the hydrogen, not only do we see the the normal shrimp nebula that if you just, you know, search shrimp nebula, this is what you get here. You see the full arc of the planetary nebula. And along with that, you see this long other bubble that's up here, including some hydrogen haze around it, which I haven't seen a whole lot of. For the sulfur, you could also see the full planetary nebula as well, and that secondary bubble is much more faint and then the the oxygen it's really only where the bow shock of the expanding gases is interacting with the interstellar medium that it is of high enough energy to actually excite the the oxygen atoms there now they're all processed pretty much the same way with uh, sharpening removing the stars denoising and then uh doing some stretching and removing the stars here on the hydrogen you could really see the the outer hydrogen envelope including that secondary bubble that's behind it and the full the full planetary nebula the the hydrogen just looks so cool with these extra wisps and stuff along with that is a faint hydrogen arm that extends down to the uh, to the east here uh, I, I can't imagine that's actually associated with the planetary nebula itself. That's uh, probably just coincidental hydrogen in the area. Now, at first, I did try a SHO palette. Uh, I, I just wasn't wasn't liking the results, even even right off the bat. Uh, just I, I think it was going to take a lot of work to to process how I would like to see the image. Using Polymyon Astro's 4X script utility, this was a much more pleasing initial palette that I liked. Uh, ended up, you know, neutralizing the background and going through some various HDR tactics to tame down the, the really bright bow shock here. And, uh, you know, remove some blemishes and ended up with a, a final starless version I, I really liked. As for the stars, I did use my narrowband RGB star tool since I only did have narrowband data and I, I thought the colors turned out really well. I did remove the fractal diffraction support arm pieces of hardware uh, to, to add diffraction spikes back in. I think the community is kind of split whether they like seeing diffraction spikes or not. Uh, I, I think they look... I think they look pretty cool myself too. So then finally putting the stars back in with the, the full image left me my uh, gone shrimpin' uh, shrimp nebula image here. Now there are some interesting aspects to it. One, it seems to be in a very devoid area of nothing. It's in Cassiopeia. There are two galaxies you can see. There's one right here and this one right here. And, and, and that's that's it. I also searched for quasars. There's absolutely no quasars in the entire image. And there's only two carbon stars as well. The carbon stars, beside, despite all the very bright, deep red ones, uh, the only two carbon stars is this star here and, and this star there. What I do like about the image and the data that the 10-inch F4 is able to capture is not only the the full planetary nebula bubble, but also this this broader extended structure out here, which I mean, I really haven't seen much in other images at all. And then there's this also the secondary 
bow shock in here. I don't know if it's associated with this star or whether it's just other tendril artifacts, but the, the overall detail in here is just so cool to so cool to look at. The other thing I found very interesting is if I were to ask you what the progenitor star was in the Shrimp Nebula, um, you know, I might have been tempted to say maybe this bright one with this other little bow shock structure or, or something, but it, it, it's, it's actually this little tiny, this little tiny star right here. That's the, uh, the progenitor star causing all this commotion. I've also updated Astrobin with my Gone Shrimpin. Shrimp Nebula in the 4X palette. It has the Starless version as well. I have all my acquisition details here. And, and a write-up on, on some of these objects. The galaxies, the carbon stars. And I do have a nice little animated GIF here of just kind of cycling through the different uh, narrowband channels to see the differences. I have also updated my website, setiastro.com, with my Gone Shrimpin image. It has a mouse over zoomable image. You could also click it to pull up the the full uh, resolution. I do have the write-up, some other close-in crops, the GIF, and, and the starless images. Well, I'm hoping this is inspiring some of you to go out there and try to get some deep exposures on some of these uh, common nebula to see what else you could see out there. Please comment, like, and subscribe.